Hello, I'm Mr. Steinauer, and this is third and fourth grade science. Today, we'll be talking about patterns in motion. All you'll need for today's lesson are a few pieces of paper and something to write with. That'll help you keep track of vocabulary we discuss, but it'll also help you follow along with me in doing today's activity. Before we jump into talking about and finding our own patterns in motion, let's review some vocabulary from our previous lessons. In our last lesson, we talked about balanced forces and unbalanced forces. Remember that balanced forces are two forces of the same size acting on the same object. Unbalanced forces are different sized forces acting on the same object. We also talked about Isaac Newton. He lived over 300 years ago, but his discoveries and observations changed science forever and still impact us today. So far, we've already discussed one of his three laws. That's Newton's second law of motion, which says that the acceleration, the speeding up, of an object depends on its mass, the matter inside it, and the force used to move it. Force and mass together affect the speed or acceleration of an object. Today, we'll also talk about Newton's third law of motion. Isaac Newton's third law of motion says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When we push on a wall, there's a force from the wall that pushes back. When we stand, a force from the ground pushes back on us. We also see Newton's third law of motion Every action has an equal and opposite reaction when we look at patterns of motion. Think about a basketball player dribbling a ball. Every time they use force to push down on that basketball, the ground takes force and pushes it back up to meet their hand. Basketball players don't even have to look at the basketball as it's dribbling because they know inherently that that ball is going to bounce right back up to meet their palm. That's because of Newton's third law of motion. And that also describes one pattern of motion that we'll discuss today. Up and down. A bouncing effect that we see through all kinds of objects, even objects that don't bounce well. If you knock something off your table on accident, chances are, even if it's a glass of water, that when the glass hits the ground and the water spills all over, that glass will also bounce back up. There's still force that that falling glass has that the ground gives it back to give it enough bounce. So up and down is a pattern of motion. Next, we're going to describe and draw out some patterns of motion together. I'm going to prepare my desk. Prepare your workspace now so that you can draw along with me. So I've got my notebook here, got my writing utensil using a Sharpie just because it'll make big thick lines that'll be easy for you to see. First thing I'm going to do is draw a way to represent five different patterns of motion. The first one is one we just talked about. up and down. This is also a perfect example of Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Or when you dribble the ball down, it's going to bounce back up. A second pattern of motion that we could describe is the same pattern of motion you make on a swing set. That's back and forth. Notice the spelling is a little different than the number. Fourth is another way for forward. So we have this here, back, then forth, then back, then forth. 
Going back and forth is also an example of Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Pattern number three. Remember, I'm describing them first, and then you and I will write them down together. This one is one that we see in the Kansas City area every spring. Of course, there are other ways you can do this, like at a water park. A spiral. What's one example of a spiral motion? Hmm. The example that comes to my mind when I see this is a tornado right, that makes a classic spiral motion in the formation of the cyclone. Something that happens with tornadoes, not every other spiral necessarily, but with tornadoes, there's also going to be a force that goes the opposite direction on the outside of that tornado. So in that way, tornadoes are another example of Newton's third law of motion, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Of course, not every spiral is going to show that. This pattern of motion, you could imagine going down a water slide or even riding some sort of roller coaster with a spiral pattern in it. Our fourth pattern in motion is... Can you predict what I'm going to do next? That's right. Just back to the beginning. You might think of like a clock. Clocks will do that. You'll also, if you spin something around, it's going to follow this pattern of motion. If you hold an object and then you spin it in a circular motion, you'll notice that it makes a circular pattern. Notice this word here it means there's a circle in it. Let me see that circ. Our fifth and final pattern that we will describe today is this. What would you describe this pattern of motion as? How would you name this pattern of motion? Let's call it a zigzag. Gets its name from these Z letters, right? Zig, zag. They make those sharp edges just like those Z letters. Next, we're going to map out our patterns of motion that we discussed. Then you will find a final pattern of motion on your own to complete this diagram. Remember that a diagram is a drawing or plan that describes something. The first thing we're going to do for our diagram, just like the previous diagram we've made in our class together, we're going to give it a title. Patterns of Motion. And then let's go ahead and leave a space for six different numbers. The first pattern of motion we described was up, down. Remember dribbling, throwing something up in the air and it coming down is an example of up and down. We also described back and forth, like a swing. Remember, these two show Newton's third law, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Every action, equal, opposite, reaction. Our third example was a spiral. A totally different pattern of motion. Now remember, you're building this diagram with me. 
number four was circular, and number five was zigzag. Yours might look a little bit different than mine. That's A-OK, -okay. that's totally fine. Not all diagrams will look exactly the same. Now number six. This is where we say, now it's your turn. You are going to complete your diagram by thinking of a sixth pattern in motion. When you complete your diagram, regardless, share it with a loved one. That concludes today's lesson. It's been my pleasure having you in class today. I'm Mr. Steinauer, and I'll see you next week.